This hack tip is brought to you by Bitbucket by Atlassian. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. Before I get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are watching this over on YouTube so you get to see all of our new Hack Tip episodes. I am super excited. We have tons of episodes lined up for you in the next coming months, so make sure you subscribe. I am your host, Shannon Morse, and today we are talking about viewing networking information via the terminal. Okay, networking is the bane of my existence. Something is always always going wrong with online networks and if it's the fault of your ISP or weather, chances are you can't do much about it and then you're kind of out of luck. But there are some handy commands in Linux that can help you keep an eye on your network and fix any kind of issues that might pop up internally, either on your computer, either on your computer, or on the network itself. Now, if you are new to networking, keep in mind that the IP address is your internet protocol address that specifically defines who your computer is on the network. It can be a 32-bit number like 172.153.8.12 or something like that on IPv4, or a much bigger number that would be 128 bits for IPv6. Now, I dug deep into IP is on hack tip episode 125. So refer back to that episode for more information. And I'll put that link in the show notes so you can check it out and learn a bit a little bit more about networking if you aren't familiar. Now your host and domain name are what the computer converts the IP address into. So it's easily human readable, like hack5.org, www.hack5.org. And the URI or the uniform resource identifier encompasses URLs and URNs. Now let's talk about these commands. Let's get right into it. So first off is ping. This is one of my favorites. I use it all the time. P-I-N-G. Uh, this can be used to send an echo request to a network host. This is really great if you want to check your network connection, uh, just in case you think that you're offline. I use ping 8.8.8.8 all the time and you'll see that running now. Uh, this just pings Google servers and it keeps an eye out for any packet loss. Now we have discussed echo requests and replies during my hack tips over on the Wireshark series, so refer to that playlist for more. And again, I'll put that link in the show notes. So moving on with ping, this is going to give me a default byte of 64 bits and you can see that in, it looks like the first line right here, and you'll see that continually going on. This is small enough of a packet that it's not going to cause any kind of fragmentation issues. Uh, and then you'll see the IP address that I pinged, the ICMP sequence number, and they should be in line as long as everything's good, uh, the time to live and time in milliseconds that it took for the reply at the very end. If you want to make this stop, just hit Control C and that is going to end it, and it's also going to give you some information down at the bottom, you'll notice at the bottom of my screen, uh, which if you do see any kind of packet loss, if it tells you that you had a certain packet loss down here, it can signify a problem with your network connection. Now ping is also going to keep going unless you stop it just like I did, or you can add ping taxi four or whatever number you specify, 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And if I let that run, it will only go four sequences and then it will stop after that because I specifically told it just go four times. Now I want you to check out trace route or trace route, depending on who you are. I like to say route, so that's what I'm gonna say. Trace route, and then I'll put in 8.8.8.8, no more dots. This is going to show you all of the hops through different routers that your packet has to take to get to the website that you are trying to ping. You'll notice that it's quite a few different s sequences and there's lots of jargon in here, which we don't necessarily need, need to deal with. Traceroute shows me 13 different routers that I had to travel through to eventually reach Google. I do see identifying information for most of them, but for private ones, I'll just see a star, star, star. Uh, for example, right here, you'll just see that star, star, star. It might be behind a firewall or something like that, but nevertheless, this router or this uh, this ping that I sent out, for some re reason, when it hit that network, it was uh, private. I also see three millisecond times for each one, right over here, for example, right here. And then next to it, you'll notice one, 
two, and three. So I have three different millisecond time intervals listed for the same hop, showing me a sample of how long a packet is going to take to get from the router back to me. Now try these out with some different IPs and you'll probably notice some different intervals of times for different IPs that you try to ping. And we are going to have a bunch more examples about networking right after this break. Let's be honest, your code is your world. You create it, you tweak it, and you lovingly obsess over it every single day. So picking the right repository management tool is super important, only the best for your code, right? That's why the team at Atlassian created Bitbucket. Bitbucket is the Git solution for professional teams helping over 5 million developers build with a purpose. Bitbucket gives teams of all sizes free, yes, again, I did say free, private repositories with state-of-the-art features like the world's best pool request algorithm, built-in continuous delivery, and integrations with your favorite tools like Docker, which I know a lot of you guys use out there, AWS, and Azure. Plus, you will get Jira integration, since it is from Atlassian, giving your team everything you need to take your code from concept all the way out to the customer. We have used Bitbucket to share private code and collab on it so that the code is perfect before we release it into the wild. Bitbucket is for the code that takes us to Mars, it's the code that decodes the human genome, or drives your next car or maybe it's for your next InfoSec tool. Visit bitbucket.org slash for the code to start your free account. That's bitbucket.org slash for the code. Try Bitbucket today. What will your code do? We are now back with more networking. Now we're going to try to run a couple of different commands. First off, let's try this one. netstat tac ie then hit enter. This is going to show you your current device's network status and settings. So for mine, I see two different ones specifically because I'm just using, well, two different ones at the moment. If I plug in ethernet, I would see a third one, but I'm just using wireless at the moment. So one of these is going to be wireless. That is my WLP58S0, and then another one, which commonly is referred to as ETH0, would be Ethernet. In my case, Ethernet looks really funny. It's a long digit uh, string of random numbers and letters. So keep that in mind for newer Linux devices. The other one that I wanted to point out, though, is this top one that is called Low or Lootback Interface. So this basically means that the computer uses it to talk to itself. If you disconnect any of your interfaces, though, the IP address listed is going to disappear. You will notice for each of these, you have some kind of address associated with the uh, network interface. So in my case, down here, I have uh, this one. And then for low or loopback, I have this one, which that is not going to change, at least as far as I can tell, it has not changed. The wireless one, though, potentially can, depending on what network you're on. If you choose to disable one of these interfaces, it will cease to exist in netstat. So if you run that command, you will no longer see it in the list. If they are working and connected, you will see a valid IP address, like I mentioned earlier. And check out other netstat commands with netstat tac help. So netstat tac tac help. And you can also type in man netstat to see all sorts of different protocols and commands and everything that you can use with it. Also, PS, I did want to mention IF config because I know everybody will if I don't mention it to in IW config that's coming up later. But IF config, IF config tac A, that's the first one I wanted to mention. Uh, this is going to show you very, very similar results. Lastly, for today, I also wanted to mention uh, using the host command to find your IP address of a host name. So if I wanted to find Google's host or Google's IP address for their host name. I could type in host www.google.com, hit enter, and it will show me their IPv4 address. And if they have IPv6, it will also show me IPv6. You can do this via uh, vice versa too and show the domain name instead. So that's pretty cool, a little additional thing that you can do there in case you're looking for a specific IP address. Now, thank you again so much to Bitbucket. We have a bunch of hack tips heading your way. So make sure again to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash hack5. Until then, I want to hear your feedback. Comment below and let me know what kind of network issues you've run into and how you have fixed them in the command line interface. I think that would really help a lot of our other viewers out there who may have run into similar experiences or problems. And be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. And again, check the show notes for any additional notes. And I will be there over on Hack5 reminding you to trust your technolust.